the people who make decisions about cost, as, as John Ruskin knew, people who make decisions about cost alone are always going to fall, fall foul, fall victim of, you know, manipulative operators, cheapskates, skinflints, you know, and cutthroats. Cost is not the most important thing in civilization. It really is not. I believe the ability to make things um, is. And because we're dominated in this country by what I always think of as a bit of a McKinseyite sensibility, you know, you can measure anything, McKinsey said, if you can measure it, you can manage it, and that applies to, you know, to, to, you know, to profit and loss. And I think that's so wrong, because the most important things, you know, can't be measured. Um, making things. It's not just about, I mean, clearly it's an important aspect of economic activity you know, and, and wealth production, but I think much more than that, and this is what I want to talk about at the, uh, you know, at the, um, at the IF event, is this. It's, it's making things. If you live in a culture which makes, makes things, you keep alive important things like social cohesion, respect, pride, pleasure, dignity. And as John Ruskin knew, you know, people, who, people who make things tend to be more contented, more satisfied, more, re more, you know, more confident, um, and frankly, you know, better behaved people. The idea that we've been living for, you know, for so long now in, you know, in, in what Keynes has described as a casino rather than a, you know, rather than a workshop, I mean, I'm not against financial institutions, but the, the disproportionate gains that can be that, that arrive from financial manipulation have removed from people uh, any fundamental conceptual relationship between input um, and reward, you know, and between the, and the, between the meaning of things. And that's why that, that's why it's that's why it's a tragedy when we, we, we we're now going to lose the ability to make trains in this country. And it's, I'm not talking about that in sentimental terms. I'm not thinking, oh, Stevenson's rocket, we've lost a lot of fabulous Victorian. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not interested in that. I'm looking to think about the future, you know, not about the past. Why does no one make the calculation that it's actually worth investing in, 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 in train making? Because you know, if you invest in train making, this is the, important, uh, the importance of manufacturing. It's not just the actual thing itself. But if you live in a culture and economy which makes things, not only do you get all the benefits of social cohesion, you keep alive all the upstream and downstream disciplines, which are all also necessary to a, to, a, to, a, to a credible culture and a credible economy. You know, teaching, research and development, materials, you know, marketing. We can't live, I mean, Mrs. Thatcher taught us for a while, uh, and quite successfully, that we can live in a, uh, a country which just serves cappuccino to each other. Uh, but you can't do that indefinitely, as we're now finding out. One of my many problems is that I used to regard John Ruskin as a preposterous old Tory bigot, and, I, and you know, as I get older I'm more and more identifying with, with Ruskin and his you know, passion about the nobility of work, the morality of, you know, objects, which I, frankly I, I've always, always believed. But Ruskin's problem was this, he moved from doing straightforward art criticism to doing political economy, and then went promptly mad. And I, 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 I sense myself moving from doing art, you know, art criticism to doing a version of political economy which I'm not really competent to do, and possibly the abyss of insanity awaits.